right, here's another caricature from 1989. The question was, should teachers be tested too? Because they noticed I went from being a real skinny guy to a very muscular guy in a short period of time. And back then, steroids were all the rage for bodybuilders. All right, back to the last lesson where we were adding and subtracting fractions. I didn't mention that to get a common denominator, in this, in this case it was 15, and I explained how we got that. You can just multiply the two denominators. 3 times 5 is 15. And then, if you multiply 3 times 5 to get the 15, you have to multiply 2 times 5 to get the 10. And likewise here, you multiply 3 times um, 3, because I had to multiply 5 times 3 to get 15. 3 times 3 is 9. So you don't have to cut up the pizza pies into equal slices. You can just do it mathematically. However, what happens if you have something like 5 twelfths plus 13 twenty firsts? You can just multiply the denominators. 12 times 21. Well, let's see. 10 times 21 is 210. 2 more 21s is 42. 210 plus 42 is 252. So you could do that. Just multiply those to get that number. And then, since I multiplied 12 by 21 to get 252, I have to multiply 5 times 21, which is 105. And since I multiplied 21 by 12 to get 252, I have to multiply 13 by 12, which is... Um, Let's see, 144 plus another 12 is uh, one, yeah, 156, right? I had to think there for a second for some dumb reason. And then you can just add the numerators because once you have a common denominator, you don't have to, you don't change it anymore. And that gives me 261. We'll think about reducing that in a minute. Or if you prefer, you can write these two fractions as, or that one fraction as two separate fractions, each over 252. I don't really like to do that because it just involves more writing. But if it makes more sense to you, change this fraction to that by doing what we did. Change this fraction to that one. And then once you have a common denominator, it stays the same, because that's basically the, the size of the pizza slice. There'd be 252 slices, so each one would be just a little bit more than one degree. So they're very tiny. And can we reduce this? Well, we can only reduce this if there's a number that goes into the top and into the bottom. 261 is not divisible by 2, so we can't use 2. But what about 3? Three? 3 is going to work because 2 plus 6 plus 1 is 9, so it's divisible by 3. 2 plus 5 plus 2 is also 9, so it's also divisible by 3. So let's divide by 3. 270 divided by 3 would be 90, but it's, it's 9 less, so that would be 3 less than 90, so 87. And 252, well, let's see, 240 is 80, plus um, 3 more because of the extra 12. So, or 4 more because of the extra 12, is that what I said? So that's 87 over 84. Just a bit bigger than one, one and three eighty fourths. So let's see, this is a little bit less than half. This is more than half. If you add them up, it turns out you get a little bit more than one. So it's in the right ballpark. Everything makes sense. However, this is not the best way to do it, I'm sorry to say, because although 12 times 21 is 252, it's not the smallest common denominator. Let's see if we can do it more simply, and of course get the same answer, by using the lowest common denominator. Well, to figure that out, think about 12, and think about 21. Some people are just good at coming up with the common denominator, the lowest common denominator, just by thinking about it. But let's break 12 down into its 
factors, 2 times 6, which is 2 times 3, and 21 is 3 times 7. So we need all of these numbers in our common denominator. But we don't need this extra 3 because we've already got a 3. We just need the extra 7. So the, the lowest common denominator will be 2 times 2 times 3 times 7. 2 times 2 times 3 is 12, of course, times 7 is 84. So the lowest common denominator is 12 times 7, or like I said, 84, which is looking right because we got 84s over here. So let's redo the question using 84 as our common denominator. And if you want, you can write it as two separate fractions. I'll do that, even though I'd prefer just to write it as one fraction. So to go from 12 to 84, I have to multiply by 7. So 5 times 7 is 35. To go from 21 to 84, I have to multiply by uh, 4. 13 times 4 is 52. Now if I add 35 and 52, sure enough, 87. So 1 and 3, 84 is again the answer. So I, ho I hope you're catching on to manipulating fractions by multiplying, dividing, adding, subtracting. If you do need a common denominator, you can always multiply the denominators, but it's better if you get the lowest common denominator by factoring the denominators and just picking what's not common. So those plus the extra seven. Alrighty, stay tuned. Now we didn't add variables into the fractions this time, so we'll get to that, not to worry. I'll see what's up next time. Bye-bye.